Hey everybody, well I'm back. Um, I know my background looks weird. I'm in my truck um, and I'm actually at a educational workshop. Um, and so I need to study um, because I'm not gonna be able to study tonight because I'm at, well, I'm gonna be at church. So I need to study right now. We have an hour off for lunch. So I thought, why not study? So let's continue with a second set of flashcards. Okay, this one says, explain the role of vocabulary in literacy development. Okay, let's see. I didn't bring my glasses. Ugh, they're in the room. Okay, no problem. I will do the best that I can. When students do not know the meaning of words in a text, their comprehension is limited. As a result, the text becomes boring or confusing. The larger a student's vocabulary is, the larger a student's vocabulary, sorry, is the better their reading comprehension will be. A larger vocabulary is also associated with the enhanced ability to communicate in speech and in writing. So it's our role as teachers to help students develop a good working vocabulary, and that is true. Right now in my classroom at this time, um, I try to um, give my students uh, a set of vocabulary words that we're going to use in an essay or in a unit and then I uh, would do use it in a graphic organizer and so they do that daily and then of course I test them on it um, so I want to make sure that they're using the vocabulary not just to copy it and to just have it in their interactive notebook no I want to make sure that they use it and they know that there's a reason for it because my students don't like to do things if there's not going to be a grade or there's not going to be a connection to another assignment so I don't know if your students are the same way but mine aren't okay here we go um describe some effective teaching techniques that can be used to promote vocabulary development all right a student's vocabulary can be developed by calling upon a student's prior knowledge and making comparisons to that knowledge, uh, defining a word and providing multiple examples of the use of the word in context, showing a student how to use context clues to discover the meaning of a word, and uh, providing instruction on prefixes. Remember, we talked about that in the previous video, Prefix prefixes, roots, and suffixes to help students break a word into the parts and decipher its meaning, okay? Showing students how to use a dictionary and a thesaurus, okay? That is important. And asking students to practice new vocabulary by using words in their own writing. Providing a print-rich environment with the word while studying a group of words related to a single subject, subject sorry, such as farm words, transportation words, etc. So that concept development is enhanced. Okay. So um, about students using an addiction at the source, there are so many students, if we do not use it in the classroom um, regularly, they don't know how to use a dictionary. In my era, I know I'm a, a lot older than most teachers. We use dictionaries all the time. This is before internet and um, mobile devices. So of course, um, but today's in today's world kids still don't know how to use a dictionary because of course they can use it on they can look it up online or use siri but i think it's important for them to use dictionary i know in texas they can use the dictionary for the star test okay so i think that's important all right define suffix and describe the three types of suffixes Ooh, interesting okay a suffix is a syllable that appears at the end of a word that creates a specific meaning in combination with the root or base word. There are three types of suffixes. There's your noun suffixes. Noun suffixes can change a verb or adjective to a noun. They can denote that the act of state of quality or of results of something. Okay, so for example, meant, M-E-N-T, added to argue becomes an argument which can be understood as the act of, the, excuse me, as the act, the act of, maybe that was a typo, I don't know, of resulting state from arguing or the reasons given to provide an idea, okay? So it says a noun suffix says can also denote the doer or one who acts. Interesting. All right, I just want to make sure nobody sees me. Well, if they do, well, I think there's a crazy lady in the truck. That's okay. Okay, verb suffixes. These 
change other words to verbs and denote to make or to perform the act of. For example, en added to soft make soften, which means to make soft. Hmm. Other verb suffixes are ate uh, and uh, okay. And then F-Y, like in dignify, and I-Z-E, like in sterilize. And and this is one that uses adjective. I think it's called adjetiv adjetivial. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Sorry. Adjetivial suffixes. These suffixes change other words to adjectives and include suffixes such as F-U-L, which means full of. When added to care, the word careful is form, which means full of care. And then the other examples are ish, I-S-H, and less, L-E-S-S, -S, like, and careless. All right. So the next one is ex explain the role of prior knowledge in determining appropriate literacy education. All right. So even preschool children have some literacy, literacy skills, and the extent and type of these skills have implications for instructional approaches. So comprehension is very important and comprehension results from relating to or more pieces of information. One piece comes from the text and another piece might come from prior knowledge. Something from a student's long-term memory. Uh, okay, so that's important. And then it also talks about extensive literacy experience and are better prepared to further develop their literacy skills in school than children who have not been read to have few books or magazines in their homes and are ex uh, seldom exposed to high level oral or written language. And this is true. Um, I, my own children, um, they're grown now, but my own children, I would read to them every night. I even read to them when they're in the room. Okay, I'm one of those parents. But um, my first child does have dyslexia. And so I'm glad that I did that. And even in the summer, I would give them homework. I know they hated it, but that's okay. Um, I did, I would give them homework in June. So all in June, they would have, um, I think I gave them two to four hours of homework. I know, bad parent, sorry. But I, I knew as a reading teacher that it was important for them to have that um, literacy background and that they would help them. And it did. And because the one that, that has dyslexia, um, he is, uh, you know, he was taking college courses and I know it was difficult for him, but I think I, well, I think I know that, um, because I worked with him in the summer that he had a better foundation and was able to, uh, take college classes because of that. I mean, he still struggled. I understand that, but I think I did, um, as parents, we built a good, solid foundation for them, for him. Now, my second uh, child, my son, my second son, uh, he, I mean, he just picked it up really fast and, uh, and he really loved reading. And so that was good for him. And again, a lot of vocabulary, a lot of reading out loud to them, uh, I think makes the, makes all the difference. And I can tell in my students that there is a difference. You could tell the students that have been read or <clears throat> read themselves or follow along online with teachers that read out loud or like, um, what is that? There's a website, oh, Storyline Online, Storyline Online. Okay, you have actors and actresses that read out loud children's books to people or students. So that's good as well. All right, moving on. List ways to provide a print rich environment in the classroom, okay? A teacher can provide a print rich environment in the classroom in a number of ways. These include displaying the following in the classroom, children's names in print or cursive, children's written work, newspapers and magazines, instructional charts, written schedules, signs and labels, printed songs, poems, and rhymes. Using graphic organizer, I do that. Graphic organizers are amazing, amazing, amazing for vocabulary and to introduce like essays, perfect. I, I, we just did an argumentative essay um, and I used a certain graphic organizer. I think it helped. We did a whole week using that graphic organizer and the following week we wrote our essays. So the kids, if they already had their graphic organizers, it was easy and easy for them to get that information and to make it in paragraph form. So it was great. All right. Using big books to point out features of print, such as specific letters and punctuation. 
uh, track print from right to left, emphasize the concept of words and the fact that they are used to, they are used to communicate. All right, well, let's go. Let's see. Oh, okay. I just want to make sure to go over my time because I gotta go back. All right. List the facts children should know about letters. Okay. Decoding is a method of strategy used to make sense of printed words and figure out how to correctly produce, pronounce them. Hello. I need my glasses, but it's okay. In order to decode, a student needs to know the relationships between letters and sounds. Very important. Um, so uh, they need to know uh, blends and... Uh, let's see what else because it's really long i just want to make sure we get the meat of it a uh, decoding can also refer to skills a student uses to determine the meaning of a sentence okay so it says these skills include applying knowledge of vocabulary sentence structure and context all right moving on explain how children develop language skills and list ways to aid this development children learn language through interacting with others by experiencing language and daily and relevant context and through understanding that speaking and listening are necessary for effective communications. So teachers can promote language development. And so I'm gonna move on. It says teachers can assist language development by modeling, enrich vocabulary, there's that vocabulary again, and teaching new words, oh, using questions and examples to extend a child's descriptive language. Um, and then uh, providing time for students to use their, their practice their speech and asking for clarification to provide students with the opportunity to develop communication skills and providing feedback to let children know they have, uh, excuse me, know they have been heard oh, and understood. All right, let's move on. All right, explain the benefits of print and book awareness for children. All right, print and book awareness helps a child understand that there is a connection between print and messages contained on signs, labels, and other print forms in the child's environment, okay? And I'm just gonna summarize, okay? Uh, that print written in English runs from left to right, that's important because not all languages are left to right, and from top to bottom. That a book has parts such as the title, the cover, a title page, and um, a table con the table of contents. That a book has an author and contains a story. That illustrations can carry meaning that letters and words are different, that words and sentences are separated by spaces and punctuation, that different text forms are used in different functions, and that print represents spoken language and how to hold a book. You would think everybody knows, but of course, when they're little, it they might be upside down, so you need to show them correctly how to hold a book. All right, let's move on. Explain the role of fluency and literacy development. Fluency is the goal of literacy development. It is ability to read accurately and quickly. Okay, um, I'm going to move on. Teachers can help students build fluency by continuing to provide reading experiences and discussions about text that gradually increase in level of difficulty. Reading practice, both silently and out loud, word analysis practice, instruction and in reading comprehension strategies, opportunities to express responses to, to readings through writing. And along to go along with that, in my classroom, we do a lot of read theory. Read theory is free. Well, now there is a, um, I guess there is a package. I don't know if you said that, but you can upgrade to um, to another package. But the basic read theory is amazing and it's free and it assesses students to see where their reading level and then the kids will quiz on that reading level. And it helps with comprehension. So they read a passage and then you have comprehension questions to go with it. And as a teacher, um, I can see all the data. So if I have to go to a 504 meeting or a parent meeting, I can just print that out and I can see um, how many books they've read or stories they've read. And I can see, um, you know, their reading levels, if their reading levels are going up or down. So that's good. All right, so that's readtheory.org. Okay, explain the relationship between oral and written language development. Oral and written language development occur simultaneously. The acquisition of skills in one area supports the acquisition of skills in another. However, oral language is not a prerequisite prerequisite to written language. All right, so it's talking about oral language development does not occur naturally, but does occur in a social context. And then also talks about written language development can occur without direct instruction. In fact, reading and writing do not necessarily 
need to be taught through formal lessons if the child is exposed to a print rich environment. And so a as a teacher, you can assist a student's or a child's de uh, language development by building on what the child already knows. Perfect. Okay, let's see how many cards. It's been here 15 minutes and I, don't <laughs> I did not crack the windows. So I'm getting a little sweaty. So I need to hurry. One, two, three, four. Okay, we've still got a quite a bit. All right, let's just go to 20 minutes, okay? List classroom activities that teach phonological awareness. Classroom activities that teach phonological awareness include language play and expose and exposure to a variety of sounds and context of sounds. Activities that teach phonological awareness include clapping to the sounds of individual words, names, or all words in a sentence. Practicing saying blended phonemes, singing songs that involve phonemic phoneme replacement. Sorry, again, I don't have my glasses. Reading poems, songs, nursery rhymes out loud, reading pattern and predictable text out loud, listening to environmental sounds or following verbal directions, playing games with rhyming chants or finger plays, reading um, text out loud, grouping objects by beginning sounds. You know, I find that interesting because I'm taking, again, if you didn't, if you don't know the from the first video or first study session that I am taking the Texas, that's a T-E-X-E-S um, certification test for uh, language arts or ELAR, English language arts and reading from 7th to 12th. But yet I see a lot of cards that have, you know, um, information about the elementary level. So I just find that interesting. But it builds on. I mean, they build on each other. I, I again, I teach 7th and 8th grade and I still use read alouds and I still use, you know, uh, vocabulary and word games and all that good stuff because they still need it. All right. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up because I'm getting hot in here. All right. So I think I did good. All right. Have a good day. Bye.